Hello everybody, my name is Mohit Desponde, and uh, and this is going to start the, the sequence of videos that is going to kind of uh, give you a an intuitive and a complete understanding of of optical flow, and we're also going to get a little bit into uh, the mathematics of it, particularly the um op the actual equation for optical flow, and I'll talk about some stuff there. I won't be going you know too far into uh, the mathematics, but I just want to kind of give you. I want to start off by giving you more of an intuitive understanding first, and then we can kind of take that intuition and solidify it into more concrete math uh, terms. So first of all, uh, we have to kind of talk a little bit about what this is and uh, kind of the motivation behind this. And so images are, are great and all, uh, but videos are even cooler because because you know we have more information in in a video than in an image because in an image we just have uh, the spatial positioning of the pixels that is where they are uh in where they are in the image relative to each other so that's all we get in an image but in a video uh we we get the same spatial information but we also add a a an additional temporal component meaning we not only have the location of a pixel spatially, but we also have when does this pixel exist? Maybe it's only at you know one particular frame. Maybe it exists for a sequence of like fifty or a hundred frames or something like that. So you get this kind of additional, uh, we get this additional information about uh, the time duration of of pixels, and so optical flow is. Kind of, so a lot of when we have when we have this additional information, it, it really opens up a lot of doors as to what we can look into. And so optical flow is one of these doors. Uh, it's a computer vision. I'll guess I'll write this down. It's a computer vision technique that is used to track. You know, it's used to uh, track the apparent motion. The Apparent motion of objects in a video. So, from so using using this technique of of optical flow, we can actually find like a pixel value, or we can kind of make this more generic to like an object, and we can track it through through the video. And so, you know, we can draw, later we can draw kind of like a path, uh, we can draw like, like a path thing, and I'm, I'm going to show you, show you, I'll draw this out in just a second, but um, this is actually really interesting because with optical flow, because first of all, it, it's not just used for, for things like object tracking through videos, it actually has a ton of different applications that we're going to be discussing in a later video, like, uh, like video compression, uh, video stabilization, and and actually, just recently, there's been some um, very recent research that is using um, optical flow patterns to help uh, give descriptions of snippets of video. So you can give this AI a, a snippet of video, and it will generate a language. It'll generate like a video description, and that's really cool. And optical flow features turns out that. Optical flow is actually pretty useful to to this sort of thing, but we're going to discuss kind of this stuff at a very very top level in uh, in a later video. But let's first kind of derive the intuition behind uh, behind optical flow. So remember that uh, if we wanted to check an object through through the video, remember that at, on a computer level we only have access to the these raw pixels. And so suppose I have like my suppose I have like a frame here. You know, here's one frame, and then here is another frame. We only have access to to the raw pixels, and I kind of drew these. These probably should be the same size, but we only have access to, you know, here's, whoops, here is, you know, a frame T, maybe here's a frame T plus 1, and then I'll draw another one, sure. Uh, maybe here's a frame T plus 2 and whatnot, so... What we're trying to do with flow is to take a point here and a point here, you know, and then track it through through these frames. So, you know, it's going to go here and then it kind of goes down here. And so this is kind of what we're trying to do with uh, 
with flow. And so to, to do this, we consider two consecutive frames and we can kind of build the path and this kind of this becomes like connect the dots. Um you kind of you have you know the where the dots are the position of this particular pixel at each of the frames. So this is kind of connect the dots. And so initially at first glance this might seem impossible because you have to consider so many things like the size of the frame, how do we know which pixels are uh, which and whatnot, but it turns out that there are two assumptions that optical flow makes um, that really help uh, simplify this. So assumptions, and we're going to be using these assumptions in, in later videos. But, so there, there are two assumptions that optical flow makes. Uh, one is that pixel intensities, pixel intensities, uh, don't rapidly change don't rapidly change between consecutive or successive frames and so what I mean by this is that these pixel values don't just in two successive frames they don't just immediately change and so that would be like analogously that would be like this pixel value is green here and then in the next frame it becomes like blue or something like that. You know, so the assumption that flow makes is that this doesn't happen. And if you consider things like there like this has real world implications. Um so you know, it's the, these frames are taken that such that there's such little time between them that unless you were like actually video editing each frame um, you wouldn't really encounter something like this. Now, this is not to say that maybe pixels don't um, change after a longer period of time. That's fine. Um, but this is just saying that they don't just flip, uh, you know, between two consecutive frames. I mean, the time between these frames is like really small. So if this, if your pixels are flipping in between frames, that's kind of weird. Um, I mean, maybe there's like some video editing stuff that you can do to make that happen, but naturally, this doesn't really happen. So anyway, that's the first assumption. Um, the second assumption is that groups of pixels groups of pixels you know, move together. And so, so what I mean by this is that uh, that the, the pixels don't really move between Frame. This is just like saying that pixels don't teleport. So if I have a pixel, you know, over here, like a group of pixels here, they're not just going to like jump to that are at the top of the image. They're not going to jump to the bottom of the image in the next, um, in the next frame there. And so that kind of hinders um, good flow tracking when you when pixels just teleport. So ideally, you don't want your pixels to teleport between frames. And again, this is also you know, you want the motion to be smooth, and flow works, optical flow works really well when um, the motion is, is smooth, not when it's like jumpy or teleporty. So, you know, these, the, so like I said, these, these, these assumptions have real world implications. So, I mean, in the real world, if you're taking video, stuff just doesn't teleport everywhere. That would be really bad. And so, these assumptions are, are valid, are perfectly valid to make based on you know, the real world implications of this. Now there are ways if you were to take a video and do like some video editing stuff, you could break these assumptions intentionally, but we're not really going to be considering that. So uh so you know I've kind of drawn a picture here, but no, let me let me draw like a what kind of let me draw a just one with two frames. And so uh, actually, I'll, I'll probably have to draw a third one right here. Yeah, okay, so suppose I have my pixel here, and here's one particular frame, and I'm going to color that green, and then here is the same pixel in the, like, in the next frame here, and so, if, let me, actually, let me label these frames, so this will be something like T, and this will be something like T plus delta t. And what I mean by delta t is that means just some short amount of some short amount of time has elapsed. So if I were to look at both of these pixels in the same uh, in the same context, then I'm gonna get something like this. 
so where that they're they're two different you know they're a, a little bit apart here and so the the, the problem of flow the, like the thing that we're trying to solve here on these red here is I know I want to find there's some displacement right so the pixel moves in the x direction by some amount u and down in the y direction by some amount uh, v and so the challenge of flow is to find this u and v that it moves because if we have that then we can track the path then now that we have this displacement then we get like this um, thing called this displacement vector we know how much this pixel has moved and so um, I'm going to stop this video right here in the next video we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the solution to this um, but yeah this is this is the problem that optical flow is trying to solve how do we how do we find these values this u and v so I'm going to stop right here do a quick recap and then we're going to kind of continue uh, flow in the next video so uh, just do a quick recap here uh, so we discussed optical flow and it's the it's a computer vision technique to track the motion of objects through video. So like if here my frames of video, I want to build this path um, you know, throughout my video tracking a particular pixel. And so this can be really challenging, but there are two assumptions that optical flow makes that are kind of rooted in the real world. Um, that is that pixel intensities don't rapidly flip between frames and that pixels don't teleport are, are the two assumptions. And so these are you know valid assumptions to make and everything, but uh, in, in specific, I, I, I kind of showed a sequence of frames here, but in specific, if we look at two frames that are some time unit apart, some delta t, then the problem of flow is to find this u and v, like how much has this pixel moved in the x direction and how much this pixel uh, has moved in the y direction. So that's the problem of flow. And then in the next video, I'm going to kind of take this intuition and make it a bit more concrete using uh, mathematics. And uh, so we'll get to that uh, in the next video.